Hey guys, Eric with Blue Line Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Your time's important to me as always. And what we're going to do in today's time is we're going to check out soft plastics, but how to tweak them a little bit, hack them a little bit, so you can catch fish like this and also increase the size and catch ratio of those fish you do hook up. Stick around. I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay guys, let's jump right into these tips and tricks, these little hacks for soft plastics. Number one here, uh, first thing I'm going to show you is, you know when you take any soft plastic right out of the package, it has this nice glossy shine to it. Um, it's aesthetically appealing I think to fishermen, but not so much fish. So what I like to do is take, and you guys have maybe seen this before if you've watched some of my other videos, an emery board. This is an all purpose tool for fishing, I'm telling you. Uh, it's the best hook sharpener out there I think especially for the money you can have one of these in each pack but that's another video I'll put a link down in the description on that but something else you can do with it is I like to scuff up or rough up any of my soft plastics and get that shine off of there so what I'll do I'll take an emery board or you can take a small piece of fine grit sandpaper you could also do it with your fingers and fingernails I just don't usually have that long of fingernails to really scuff it up that good and it's a little quicker and easier to do with the emery board here so what I'm going to do is just start scuffing it up really good here and you can see I've kind of roughed it up and it looks a little chewed up there and I'm just going to keep roughing this whole bait up here and I'll, I'll do a bait here and then I'll show you okay guys that takes just a couple minutes to do on a bait but you can see the difference between the one that's scuffed up and the one that's not fresh out of the package how shiny that is and how dull this is um, it's just one of those little nuances you can do that makes such a difference in soft plastic fishing because I'll tell you there's a lot of times that this one little thing when you're fishing say heavily pressured waters that give you the edge when you can catch fish and other guys aren't or they're not getting bit um, I don't know what it is about it but the fish seem to really like it when they're just kind of scuffed up and beat up a little bit I mean I've had times when I've been on a hot bite and purposely switched over to a shinier out of the package bait just to, just to kind of see an experiment and I don't get bit near as often or as much uh, on a new bait as I would do one that is scuffed up and you know uh, I've already kind of done this this Ned rig here and same thing with it's elastic so you can do a little bit different you can stretch it way out and you can see how it brings the uh, the salt to the to the surface of the the lure there and then you can also use your emery board and finish really scuffing it up and roughing it up because you're not going to hurt this bait it's just going to give it kind of that beat up used worn out look also guys your stick baits uh, you know any soft plastic you do this with but you know your stick baits have got that shiny pretty look to them when you take them right out of the package this is a Senko here but um, I'm going to do the same thing to it I'm going to rough it up and show you the difference on that so here's the difference here guys you can see this one's been roughed up um, and it brings a lot of the salt to the surface just like on the other a lot of the other baits that are salt impregnated and you know Senkos are because they have that buoyancy factor going on but here's a nice shiny new one and you can see uh, the difference there but I'm telling you this is one thing you can do to your baits it's super simple but man does it make a difference and also what I like to do if I know I'm going to be using a lot of salt plastics on a day I'm going out fishing uh, the day before or the week before I like to get a bunch of the baits that I know I'll probably use and do those ahead of time because it does take a couple minutes on a bait to really scuff it down like it needs to be and it's kind of frustrating when you get out there get on a hot bite and you get the claws bit off of say uh, the pack of crawl here I'm sorry the pack of slim and you got to keep stopping and scuffing up a bait so I'll do a whole package or two of baits scuff them up ahead of time that way I don't have to mess with it when I'm out there on the water okay guys tip number two here and what that is you know it's frustrating a lot of times when you're fishing soft plastics and you got a z-bend you know y gap hook with that z-bend up there and the bait after it gets a little worn out a little used you catch some fish on it it keeps sliding down the shank of the hook you know you cast out there and you basically it's a ruined cast because that bait wads up uh, towards the bend here and you've just got to start all over and every time you come in or every two or three casts you got to push it back up on the z-bend here to get it to stay and there's other things you can do you can put a dab of super glue on there um, and you can also kind of cut the end off and and thread it back through again but one thing I found that works really really well is using a bobber stop and I'm going to show you how to do this and it's a little it's a simple technique just remember you can see this is a bigger size of bobber stop and I use a little bit different style that has a little uh, shaft that comes down there in that goes into the bullet weight but what I'm using these for is on the end of this hook and I'm gonna take one off here on the end of this hook what I'm gonna do 
and I'll have to put my cheaters on so I can see what I'm doing here. But I'm going to take this bobber stop and thread it through the end of this hook to push it up here on this Z-bend right here. Okay guys, you can see I've got this threaded on the end here. Uh, hopefully get a good look at that, the camera will focus in. But what I'm going to do, since it does have these little shafts on here, I always trim just a little bit of that off right there. And then I'm going to finish pushing this in. It takes a little bit of work. It's, sometimes it's better if you wet the hook shank. But I'm going to push this all the way around, all the way around here until it gets up on the Z-bin. Okay guys, I've got that up on the Z-bin now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to thread our or soft plastic, whatever you want on there. It could be a stick bait, it could be a creature bait, it, it doesn't matter. We're gonna thread that on there, and I'm gonna show you how to help keep that up on there as well. So guys, here's the finished product, okay? You can see, uh, hopefully that'll focus in right there, that that bobber stops right up there, that peg's right up there, and it keeps this from, right. even if I'm pushing on it, I mean, it keeps it from wanting to, to slide down and run down uh, the shank of that hook right there. Uh, will it eventually run over it? Sure it will because you catch enough fish on it, it gets enough tension on it, it's going to tear a hole. But with that being said, it lasts a heck of a lot longer than if you're just running a bare hook. Uh, it does a great job. Are there other options out there? Sure there are. I mean, you can buy hooks like these. Hopefully you can see that there's plastic on the end there, those two great big aggressive barbs. Uh, but these type of hooks, they're pricey. There's nothing wrong with them, they're just pricey. And I find it's a lot easier and cheaper uh, just to put something like that on there as well. And you know, here's another hook. A lot of times I'll pre-rig them. You can see that that's on there as well. And it just does a great job of helping that bait to not slide down on the hook shank. Okay guys, let's get into trick tip hack number three. And I'm gonna show you uh, this is a net bait pack a crawl and this will work on any hollow soft bait that you're going to use um, and what I want to show you is you know a lot of times when you rig one of these up um, Texas style weedless you've got a lot of plastic to go through here so something you can do to make it super simple is in the belly here just make a little bit of a slit okay I'm going to take my handy dandy scissors here I want to cut me a little bit of a slit here And then when I rig it up, so guys, now that I have my slit in there, I'm going to show you. I rig this thing up weedless like I, I normally would, you know, Texas style. Um, I'm just going to push the head of this hook through right here, or the, I'm sorry, the eyelet through. And then let me see if I can get a better view for you here. All right, guys, so what I'm doing now, I'm just going right through that slit I made, run that thing through and I don't have near as much plastic to get through when I'm trying to set the hook. Just that one little thing, just making that slit in that belly. Now I don't have near as much plastic to try and, to try and drive that hook through um, when I'm setting the hook on that bass. All right guys, let's get to tip number four. Uh, since I've already got the slit cut in this belly, I'm gonna show you something else you can do with it. And by the way, this bait's not scuffed up yet. So see, it's got that nice shiny look to it. Uh, you know, I will definitely scuff this bait up and rough it up before I fish with it. With that being said, any hollow bodied bait, and this is a net bait pack a crawl, but it could be a tube bait, and there's a lot of them out there that are hollow bodied. If you want to add buoyancy to it, you want to add lift to it, say you're, you're fishing a Carolina rig and you want this to ride way up in the air, okay? Or if you're even fishing a Texas rig and you just want this bait to stand up more, uh, any hollow bite, could be your tube or anything you're doing, what you can do is you can take an earplug, got something on it there. You can take an earplug and just take a section of this, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut a section of this and insert it into the body here. So with that being said, I'm going to take my, my scissors here, okay? I'm going to cut this in half. I like to do them long ways. So I've got me a section now, just a little section of that earplug, and I'm going to insert it right into the body here. Okay guys, you can see I've got my slit in there and you can kind of see where I've inserted the half of that. And you can put as little or as much of the, the foam or the buoyancy in there as you want. You might find something else besides an earplug you can put in there, um, you know, to give it that buoyancy. But once I've got it in there like that, I can do one of two things to the bait. I can either put a little dab of super glue there to keep that in there, or um, I can take a lighter and I can burn it, just melt it just a little bit to keep that closed. But that little trick there using the section of earplug is going to give you the buoyancy you need to keep your bait up off the bottom when you need to. Okay guys, time for tip number five and that is 
I know you guys have seen this, but it just bears repeating, and there's different ways you can use it. Using lure dye to change the color of your bait, or mainly just highlight certain areas of your soft plastic. Uh, these are the spike it, these are the markers, which I like a lot because they're just a lot less messy. This is chartreuse, and this one's red. But what I have here is the, the dip, and you can get it in all kinds of colors, but this is black. I think black's kind of underrated as a highlight color. Um, and, you know, I can take, like we were working on earlier, uh, this pack of crawl, and I can highlight the tips of this chartreuse, or I can hide them, hide them red, or any other color that you want to get and highlight with. I mean, you can see, um, you know, this, this pack of slim here, is, it comes from the factory with the red tips on it. That's for a reason, because it just makes that bait looks so much different in the water gives it a completely different look to the fish just that little bit of highlight right there um, but one thing you can do too is use this spike it dip and I'll show you how all right guys when you use this dip and I know it's simplistic but you know what I like to do is just take this and just just the tips of the claws here shake a little bit of that off and back over just the tips of the claws there and it doesn't take but just a few seconds for this dye to dry but you can see the difference it makes on this and it highlights those claws so much and any other bait um, that you want to just do the tail into or it could be the head for that matter but it just gives it a completely different look and I have I actually was in a tournament one time where I saw a guy that was dipping the black on the tail of a lizard and a lot of other guys were fishing the exact same bait and he ended up winning that tournament uh, and I think it was all because of just those the, the dip tail in this case the claws it adds a big big difference a lot of times uh, to these baits when maybe nobody else is getting bit but you are and you're doing something uh, as simple as this guys I hope you got something out of that you know what's these little things you can do that set your soft plastic fishing apart whether you're throwing a you know stick baits ned rigs creature baits it doesn't matter pitch and flipping uh, these are the little things you can do to set you apart from what the other guys are doing what everybody else is throwing it's those little nuances like this that will get you bit when nobody else is catching fish or not catching as much um, if you did like the video please consider subscribing to the channel maybe leave me a like and a comment down below and don't forget until that next video get out there fish